following introduction was filmed in front of a live audience. Hey guys, if you've ever... Hey guys, if you've ever been to the beach snorkeling and thought, I wish my car was here to enjoy it, today we're going to solve that problem. We're installing a snorkel on the V250. So a snorkel is a reliability engine protection sort of modification, sort of doing this just as a future proofing exercise. Now the reason you'd install a snorkel is to raise your air intake, same as you would for a snorkel at the beach. You're taking air from a higher location, in which case, in theory, you can submerge your car under your regular air intake and maintain air into the engine. It's for river crossings predominantly, but there's also those that say, and obviously the manufacturers will tell you that you're getting colder air, that it's cleaner, that it's better for avoiding dust and road smog of all the other users. So I just want to mention quickly with a snorkel install, take everything that the manufacturer or the person trying to sell you something says with a grain of salt. When they try and sell you on more power out of your engine or better fuel efficiency, I think the difference is gonna be negligible. Not saying it doesn't exist, but really at the end of the day, you're only raising your cold air intake about five or 600 mil in most instances, especially with the B250 and Ford Ranger. It's up, up high in the wheel arch. So don't expect to install a snorkel and have massive increases in fuel efficiency and better performance out of your engine. A lot of it can come down to a placebo effect. There won't be no effect. It's obviously gonna have some effect, but just keep in mind that that's advertising. These people are trying to sell you something and you won't see massive amounts of improvement. There don't appear to be any independent studies on the matter. It's all just a bunch of marketing or articles written by 4x4 shops who are trying to sell you these things. That's not to say it won't make a difference, but that is not what interested me. I only bought this because one day I might be doing a water crossing where I'm unsure of how deep it is and I'll go deeper than planned. It's just cheap insurance for those occasions when you don't plan to go as deep as you do. I don't plan on doing water crossings up past my wheel arches, but on the odd occasion that you do, you might actually find that the road is washed out or you go through a mud hole that's deeper than you thought and that's when the snorkel comes in handy because saving your ass for a mistake that was unforeseen. On the flip side to that, one of the major pros about having a snorkel is that there aren't many downsides. Some people argue that it actually restricts the airflow, but with the amount of these ARB Safari snorkels installed, I'm pretty confident in going with an ARB Safari snorkel. The only other downside I can think of is the noise that it adds to your driving experience on a day-to-day -day basis. But to me, that is not a reason enough not to get it. In fact, a lot of people like the sound of the snorkels. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised and there will be an increase in fuel economy and maybe there'll be a tiny bit more responsiveness from the engine, in which case it's a win-win because all I wanted was the waterproofing and I've got these other tangible benefits as well outside of that. And the reason a lot of cars have snorkels is because it is relatively cheap if you do it yourself. The kit that I've got is the ARB Safari Snorkel. I think it's a V-Spec. This is a 2015 BT50. Each model will have their own because you have different panel shapes that it has to form to. But the basic principle of a snorkel install will be the same. You cut into your airbox, you silicon up any connection points or water ingress points with Sikaflex 227. But the thing I love about the ARB snorkel and the reason I went for it is you can install it on either side of the car. As long as it's the right side of the car, then you can choose. Alright guys, so tools for this one, you're going to need some basic hand tools, socket sets, screwdrivers, some masking tape, 98mm hole saw, we've got a breaker bar here just to get the wheel lug nuts off, we've got some markers, we've got Loctite 243 which is medium strength anti-vibration, it also prevents galling, we've got a corking gun for the Sigaflex 227, I've got some drill bits I'll use as a pilot bit, stepping drill bit is definitely recommended, a torque wrench to torque up your wheel lug nuts, and outside of that, some files, a small round one to get inside the holes and a half curved back to do some of the larger holes and then just some general screwdrivers and stuff to get body trim off you might need some pliers now i'll be jacking the car up as well so a trolley jack and a car stand just until we get that wheel off once i've got the wheel off i'll lower it back down to a reasonable height so the working space is nice and comfortable i don't want it jacked up too high i think that's about it everything else will get covered as we go okay so let's have a look at what's inside the kit comes with instructions. If you're a mad dog, you don't need these, but if you want it to work properly, I'd recommend keeping these. That comes with a bill of materials. Now in here we have a template. 
So it's important that you keep that straight until we need to mount it. So pipe clamps, this is the head. And you also have the bracket here that connects to your A-pillar, which will hold the snorkel in place and stop vibrations. Bunch of washers and bolts, studs to go in the snorkel. Hello. Hello. This obviously is the snorkel. This is your template. You need this in good condition. Hello. Pipe in with pipe face. I'm not sure if it's meant to have that kink in it or not, but hopefully that is supposed to be there. So first things first, I'm going to remove this wheel, which is the front right. And then I'm just going to take off these wheel arch trims in here. These are our splash guards. Going to remove all that because this big round dog here is our air inlet. And we want to be tapping into that. And we need access through here. Going to have holes drilled here. I'm going to be inserting the silicon hose in here. So we need access underneath. All right, guys, wheels off. Here's a splash guard. Now these little clips should just be like a little Phillips head that you slightly undo and then pull out. Fair few of them. I'm not going to film this, but I'm just going to remove all them. You'll have one metallic screw, the rest will be your plastic clips. The metallic screw is the one that goes here. And it's a good opportunity to clean the car. There's always spots that just don't get cleaned out. And now you've got access to this up here. This is the air inlet, the factory one. So we'll be removing this. The next step in the instructions is to remove the air cleaner assembly. So we can hopefully leave this head on. If not, we've just got a little clamp here that we can undo. Just a few clips around here. Now I've just unclipped this cable just to get this head out of the way further. Air cleaner, it's probably due for a refresh, but I'll reuse it. Hmm. Quite a lot of sand in that. It looks like we've got holding the feet of this housing down. I can see two at the moment. So just on the foot of the airbox here, we've got an eight mil socket to undo this foot here. And there's another one just in here. So I've unclipped this intake air temperature sensor. It clips onto this body because we're lifting it. That's been unclipped. I'm undoing this hose clamp. That goes to the air intake. And then we can remove this. Yeah, we're going to take, and that can go in the bin, we're not going to reuse that. And then the last thing will be removing this clip here. That is a coolant hose. It's clipped to the air filter housing. So we need to get rid of that so we can lift this body out. So guys, got the air box out, undid the hose clamp, pulled the air intake elbow out from underneath where the wheel arch is. Now, on the far side, we had this clip around a coolant hose. Now, it's really annoying to get off. Basically, when you have your hose through there, you want to push on this tab here and that will release this clamp and then that hose will be able to pop out and you can take out the air filter housing. I removed the top of the filter housing from this hose clamp and that was just to get this clip that was on the coolant hose off because it's a real pain in the ass to get access to it. Moving that out of the way made it a little bit easier. So here we have the air intake hose, that hose clamp. I'll just leave that up there with some of the bolts for now. All right, that's it. Now we mark up the snorkel, start drilling. All right, guys, this is the bit everyone dreads. It's time to drill some holes into the panels. Put your template on. This edge should line up perfectly with the end of this panel and then line this up perfectly. And then that gives you the positioning. Tape it off as you need it. This one and this one will be our hole saws and the rest will be mounting points. They'll be 16 mil. This bit here, mark it up with a pen. We'll have to cut this out because our 98 mil hole saws will leave this portion of panel on, but we need it cut out. With this perfectly lined up, and this perfectly lined up, this line here will match this curvature that comes in towards the side mirrors. So that's a good indication that you've got this at the right height, but your template should sit perfectly anyway. So I'm gonna mark all these in black pen. Then I'm gonna drill a pilot hole through each one. I'll drill out the mounting holes with a step bit. Hole saws, 98 mil there and there. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna cut this with yet, So none of these holes are going to be too hard to drill, but I thought I'd punch them anyway. Especially this one, because it does sit next to that fender curvature, but it does just sit on the flat bit, so it should be fine to drill. Just going to go through this pilot bit. So car panels are really soft. If your hole is out of line a little bit, you can easily straighten it back up. Yeah. 
There you can see the holes and the markings. Here is a stepped drill bit for those that don't know what it is. Basically, you don't have to change drill bits. You just jump through all the way to the 16. Make sure you count the sizes correctly so you don't jump too far. The next job is to cut out these little portions here and then we'll go through a file and paint everything. This is as close as I can get. I don't have a body saw, so I've just used tin snips. Because this is really thin metal, it's gonna be quite easy to shape with a file. So I'm gonna get the remainder done with a file, tidy it up, make it round, and just touch the black line there and the black line here. I've only a couple mil to take off, shouldn't take long, because this is quite thin. After that, I will file these holes and then put a coat of paint on. Let it sit for about an hour, and then I'll come and apply a second coat. So this is what it looks like after filing. You see, I've just brought it up. I left a little bit of the black line there. Now, just a word of warning, best not to start a job like this when it's approaching dinner time. Things like this can happen when you're hungry and you try and speed up the job. So if this happens to you, you need to get some touch-up paint. You can find the code for the color of your touch-up paint, normally in the engine or on a door pillar. So that paint, 42S, that is the color of touch-up paint that I'll have to get. Paint this up now that these are all filed. I'm gonna be pretty generous with the paint. Just using this, it doesn't need a color match. This is a dark color anyway, but it's not gonna be visible. I'll make sure to shake it for a long time, let it dry for a long time, and do two coats, just to make sure you're getting proper protection. You don't need to be too neat, but don't let it drip, obviously, because it'll run down your actual paintwork. And try and get the inside as well. I'm gonna come back and do a second coat in about an hour, because it's quite cold. It's gonna take a bit longer to dry. This one I'll do with the correct color paint. Next step guys, we're gonna be mounting the bracket on the A-pillar to the snorkel. We're gonna mark it out and drill it. Before we do that, disconnect the negative on the battery. Make sure it doesn't contact again. We don't wanna accidentally have the airbags go off, so you want this disconnected and you want it disconnected for at least five minutes to ensure that the airbag system isn't operating. Now we're gonna put this mounting bracket onto the snorkel. We are gonna be fitting studs in here with Loctite 243 applied. So Loctite 243 is a medium strength thread locker. It means it'll be anti-vibration, but you can also still get it off with tools when you need to. And this also prevents galling, so your studs won't stick. So we should have four studs and then two hex head bolts. Two hex head bolts are for the bracket. The other three will be self-tapping screws that go into a plastic insert, which we'll install later. Now I will put Loctite on these, but not yet, because these have to come back out when we mark up these holes here to drill into the A-pillar. So no Loctite on these yet, we'll just Loctite the studs. It's all up firm, not tight, just so they sit in their final position. Don't need too much Loctite, a couple drops will do, and it'll work itself around the thread as you screw it in. So now we're gonna put masking tape on the A-pillar. We're gonna outline the bracket where it sits. We're gonna remove the bracket from the snorkel body. Mark those three holes and drill. Because this part of the snorkel won't cover everything, you want masking tape down. So at this stage, your snorkel body has the bracket on tight, or firm at least. And then down here, you should have your four studs with one stud holding it. And you got Loctite 243 on these four studs. Guide this in your hole, careful of your paintwork. Doesn't matter if you stuff this up, you can just redo your masking tape. You wanna make sure the snorkel is firm against the body. I find that holding it here in the middle will keep it firm around every edge. Now just mark the outside edges here. All right, so I've just had to move the tape down. So you really want this outside edge of the A-pillar to be taped up. Find where your snorkel sits best. Now we remove this, we hold it up here and we mark our holes. I'm gonna go through with the pilot bit now. Now you can use a step drill again, or you can just go up to an eight mil. Gone through all of those with an eight. Just got a 10 here, just gonna give it a quick drill just to clean it out. And then I'll use the file to finish up. Here's a close up of the three holes. I've filed briefly, but I haven't painted yet. You see this top hole's got that pink resin. The instructions state that you should hit that away with a screwdriver and hammer, you need to clear it so the plastic clips can go in deep enough. And that's why we've disconnected the negative terminal on the battery because you start hammering around in here and you could set your airbags off. If you don't have that pink resin, 
then it won't be an issue. These two holes didn't have anything. This one is just beginning there. So I just need to clear this hole out. Then I'll refile and paint these. Three holes, deburred, two coats of paint. Now we've got these little plastic clips. We're gonna insert them in here. And then we have three little tech screws that will hold this bracket on. Now you want to do these reasonably firm, but remember that it's just a plastic insert. So if you crank these too much, you will strip the plastic on the inside. Now we've got the snorkel install. Four studs will come through here that we applied Loctite to before. These washers will hold it against the body and those studs are M8, so we have 13 mm socket on these nuts. These are nylock nuts, so they're anti-vibration. We don't need to put Loctite on the other side. But I will be putting Loctite on the two hex head bolts that hold the snorkel up here. Now these holes get drilled out to 16, so if your holes were a little bit off, there's plenty of wiggle room because the studs are only an M8 stud, so there's heaps of room to move it around. You should be able to get a perfect seat following the curvature of the body to sit in there nice and tight. Just gonna get these four started, then I will pull Loctite on and get these in and then I'll tighten everything up. Once you have the snorkel body on the car, it's time to do the prep work and the sealing for the inlet. So we wanna take this out so we can run Sikaflex along the inside here underneath this lip. I took this torque screw out when I was dismantling everything in the engine bay. According to the instructions, there's another torque screw on the bottom, but mine is either missing or it never had one. So you might have two to undo. Once you've got that, there's some clips need pushing in, and then you'll have to try and work this out as you go. So I've just got that off. It is a massive pain in the ass. The best thing to do is to peel the housing up rather than trying to push these tabs down. If you can get either side of it, you can lever the actual housing up and this will just pop out. It's a bit easier. Just got one more to get rid of. Now this side, we just want to put a seal around here. Before we do that, we're just going to clean all this. I've got paper towels and isopropyl alcohol. Just going to wipe everything down in here. So the Sikaflex has the cleanest possible surface to stick to. So just having a closer look at the inlet adapter, it looks like the screw holes go all the way into the inside, which is surprising. I thought the screw holes would only go through this outside collar. So this pipe maintained some integrity, but it might be worth putting a Sikaflex in here. And since I only had one screw, the other one was missing. I'm gonna try to find a screw that will fit in there to give it a better water seal. So I'll clean in here. I think I'll try to put Sikaflex on the inside there, just to make sure that no water comes through these screw holes. So this lip here is the one that goes into the inlet housing. So I'm just gonna apply a bead of Sikaflex around here and then cover the screw holes and that should be all good. Once it's in, you can do another seal around the seam where they join. So I've just run a bead around there going to do a little bit more in there where it's a bit thin, a little bit around here. But once I push it together, I'm going to do one around the seam as well. So that should make a perfect seal there. If you just wait your finger, you can smooth that across. It shouldn't stick too bad. Now I'm just going to get a bit of Sikaflex, try to get it on the inside here and then dab it into those screw holes. I've got a 12mm long self-tapping bit here, so I'll see if that thread grabs and I'll use that. But the screw head does come into this inlet, so without the silicon there, there's a slight potential for water ingress. This next step's quite important. In the air filter housing, you have a drain valve, which is this over here. Now, ARB, the instructions clearly state that it's completely up to you whether you seal this or not. The reason they say that is that if you block this drain and you get water in through your snorkel into your airbox and it has nowhere to drain, ARB are absolving themselves of all liability. So if you get rain into your snorkel and it comes down into your airbox and it gets into your engine and ruins it, if you silicon this up, then you won't have a leg to stand on. If you've left this alone and it's just faulty, then there's a chance you might get some sort of warranty. 
So I'm gonna silicon this up for now while everything's off. What I'd like to find is some sort of bung or drain that I could fit into here and open and close myself. So I could close it on a trip and then open it for day-to-day -day driving. But for now, I am gonna silicon this up. Most people silicon this up without issue, but there is the odd case where people have had water ingress in their snorkel or airbox. And because this has been sealed up, the water's had nowhere to drain. The reason I'm gonna silicon it up while I look for an alternate drain is because I don't want to forget that I haven't done it. Thousands of people do it without issue. It's very rare that you'll have an issue, but it is possible. And that's why ARB state that it's up to the installer. It's not actually a step of the instructions. It's an optional step. So here's what it looks like at the moment. So I've just smooth it out with wet gloves so I can compact it in without it sticking to the gloves. It'll still dry. Don't worry about it possibly not dry. So the Sigflex is almost dry, it's not quite there, but we're gonna stick the airbox in. We wanna put this hose in over here, just loosely. This will be to clamp down the silicon tube that's gonna to connect to that. So because the snorkel kit comes with a hose clamp, you'll have one spare. So I'm gonna install the new one and keep this as a spare. So I've given everything a vacuum in here while I had it all out. Just clipped on that hose from the reservoir. So we've now got this silicon hose to install. We're going to shape this over here. This will go onto this 70 to 90 clamp. And then obviously we'll tighten this down once everything's in position. One eternity later. Definitely recommend doing the oval side first. The instructions have it the other way around, but I think it's easier to put the oval side on and then fit the side into the air box. Just spray a little bit of WD-40 on the inside of this silicon hose and it'll slide on so much easier. WD-40, it'll evaporate, it's not gonna interrupt with your air system or anything like that. Do up your hose clamps. Have your hose clamp facing down so you can get access to it again later. And then in the engine bay, butt the silicon up as far as it goes. It'll contact the inlet there and it'll stop. And then again, hose clamp facing up so you can get access to it later. Put your filter and everything back together. Now we just need to put the ram head on. This just slides on. Make sure you got your hose clamp ready to go. So that's it, make sure you get the alignment of this how you want it, to the front of the car. We just put everything back together and we're done. In the box, I've got everything that we didn't use, including the hose clamp that we took off and the cuts of metal from the hole saw are inside the box. So I'm just gonna weigh this now. So we've got 1.6 kilos there. On the screen is how much weight we've added to the car. Once you take this off, what we weighed at the start. All right guys, snorkel's on, everything's tight. We've reconnected the negative terminal on the battery. We've put our splash guards back on, indicator lights, intake air temperature sensor, everything you disconnected. You just make sure it goes back together. So overall, it's not too difficult a job. It is time consuming, especially if you're waiting for coats of paint to dry or you're waiting for the Sikaflex to dry. It takes a bit of time because you're a stop start. For me, it was a big pain in the ass getting the silicon hose on from the snorkel on the outside guard to the hole on the inside guard that goes into the inlet box. Spraying a bit of WD-40 around it helped it slide on a bit. I found it a lot easier to start with this end, which is the oval end. It's a little bit more tricky to get on. The other end is round and it's easier to push on. Hopefully that seal is all good. Now, when you're fitting the silicon hose on, you do move and wobble a bit. So there is a slight chance that you could actually break a seal that the Sikaflex has created. But considering how much is in there, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. That's it for this episode, Safari Snorkel. Hopefully it does the job and never lets me down. Based shortly. Shortly. Transition. Oh, yeah, that's how you burp. It's gonna go hurt. Stop. Flogs. That's not reason enough.
Nej, det er vist, det er Hallo, snorkel. Snorky, talk, man.